Hi class, my name is Venkat. Uh, I'm currently uh, a undergraduate at University of California, Los Angeles. I'm almost complete, uh, completely done with my degree in economics uh, from University of California. Um, today I'm trying to go over uh, a prep course. This is going to be the beginning of a prep course for the AP level uh, macro and microeconomics class. Um, hopefully what I'm going to do is go over some basic foundational principles of macro and microeconomics. And then we go over to microeconomics, do a couple lessons there, try to finish that up, um, a review of that, and then go over to macroeconomics and do a review of that. Now, for this class, I've used uh, two particular guidebooks. The first is the uh, Barron's book uh, for the AP macro class and the micro class. And the second book that I have is the Five Steps to Five. Uh, that's by McGraw Hill, and I've used that as well. So both of these are just a guide uh, for all you students out there. They're, they're great tools. I know other books are there too, so uh, go ahead and use these, but for the purpose of this class, I've used those as a guide. Um, basically, what we're going to try to do is talk a little bit about um, our macro class and micro class uh, in terms of foundations today. But before I get in, dig, dig into that, I just want to explain the brief course about how the AP test works for both macro and micro. Um, there's a, I believe, a 60 question macro, I mean, multiple choice uh, question, which they give you 70 minutes for. After that is the essay part. They give you about 10 minutes uh, to read over that and prepare an outline. And then they give you three questions for the essays. One is a large question, the other two are small. And you're given about, I believe, uh, 50 minutes for that particular part. So that's the way this uh, macro and micro AP test works. Um, you know, I'm going to try to hit all the major concepts that the AP test tests you on. So hopefully I'll go over everything. Um, and first of all, I mean, so I think with that, we'll just start off with basic definitions for today. So the question is, what is economics? So economics is basically the study of how resources are used in society. That's basically how it is. Okay, so we try to see and study how resources are being used in, in society. And then the next part of economics is how can we um, efficiently use these resources, right? So there's resources, the study of resources, and there's efficiently using uh, these resources. And that's basically what economics is about. Um, now, the two kinds of economics, there's, there's macro, and there's micro, okay? So I'm gonna to try to write that down real quick, okay, for you guys. There's, there's macro, okay, versus micro, okay? Now, what is the major difference in macro and micro? So macroeconomics studies the economic system of an entire country and the world, okay? So imagine if there's a forest, it's the entire forest, right? So you study the entire GDPs of countries, you can study how, econ how economies translate to each other, so how does China trade with the US? Everything deals with the macroeconomic level. The microeconomic level is really the individual units in an econ economic system. Example, uh, me as an individual, you as an individual, um, firms like uh, Stephen Academy, okay? So each of these firms are studied at the micro level. So if you imagine forest as being the uh, economic macro level, the micro is just one tree. Does that make sense? So that's basically how macro and microeconomics are, are uh, dealt with. So with that more you know, universal uh, economic concepts, there's also a term called positive versus normative uh, economics. Positive economics uh, deals more with uh, the scientific part of economics where you study using data Right? The other part, normative, is actually based on value. So how much value do you give for an ice cream cone? That's normative economics. Positive economics would be how much ice cream is consumed in the United States every day. That's positive economics. So those two are also pretty um, terms that you can see, you might see in a multiple choice question. Moving on are the resources that you use at a macro level. So what are the resources that we use in economics and how do we deal, deal with it? Basically, there are three major resources that we talk about. And you'll see this pop up in macro and micro, but more likely in uh, macroeconomics. And the way you deal, talk about this is one, you have labor, okay? That's labor. Two is land, okay? And three is capital. Okay, so these are the three major resources that we talk about in economics. There's a fourth one called entrepreneurial ability, but the, for the most part, you don't have to worry about it. It just talks about the skill that each country has. So let's go over the first three, okay? So labor talks about the people aspect of producing a good or a service. So how many humans does it take to build a car, right? So that has to do with the labor. So that has to do with the people aspect of producing
goods and services. Okay, so goods and services, what does that mean guys? Goods is basically, if I'm talking about a car, that's a good, okay? A service is, if I'm teaching you guys something, that's a service, okay? So if there's people aspect of producing uh, goods and services, if I'm teaching you something, this is the labor aspect of um, a resource in economics. The land aspect is the actual natural resources, right? The ground, the ground I'm on, the building that I'm in, the tree that I'm using, all of these are the natural resources, right? So the natural resources used, right, to produce, producing goods and services, same thing guys, same thing here, okay, same thing. The natural resources used to producing goods and services is the land aspect of it. So the building I'm in right now, that's part of the land that goes into producing this particular video, okay. The next is the capital part of it, all right. So capital actually talks about the machinery and the equipment behind producing goods and services. Does that make sense? So that's the machinery slash equipment. Okay? Now, that's also for producing a good and services, okay? So machinery and equipment. So for example, the camera that we're using right now to produce this film, okay? That is the machinery used. So that is the capital aspect. So any computers, uh, industrial equipment, in a factory use a lot of machines, that comes down to capital. So in economics, when you use resources, they're gonna come down to land, labor, and capital. Remember those. These three are extremely important in explaining any resources, okay? So I'm gonna try to have some examples later on, but that's basically how it works. The other one is entrepreneurial ability, but don't worry about that for now, okay? So moving on. So we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna erase that in just a second. But we're going to move on to a concept called opportunity cost, okay? Opportunity cost, guys, the way it works is that, you know, imagine if you are making this, if you are watching me right now, okay, the opportunity cost talks about what you've given up to watch me, okay? So for instance, instead of studying for economics, say you could have uh, gone and worked and you would have made $10, the opportunity cost of watching this video and studying economics is $10, okay? So it basically says opportunity cost is how much money, okay, what does it cost to give up something, all right? Does that make sense? Another example for you is say you wanna go and uh, play baseball, okay? But instead of playing baseball, um, you could have studied for a test, okay? So the, the opportunity cost of playing baseball is how many, how many hours of um, studying you've given up and how many test scores, you know, you know, relating to that. Now, another example, I'm just gonna go one other example because opportunity cost is really important, okay? So opportunity cost, again, is how much you've given up for something else, okay? So, for instance, you wanna study history, okay? Instead of studying history, you could also work and you can make $10 an hour. So when you study history, okay, you, the opportunity cost of studying history is $10 for, per hour. Why is it $10 per hour? Because you could be working out there and making $10 an hour instead of studying. Does that make sense? We're gonna go over more examples. Um, first is uh, to do with a country producing computers and bread. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this real quick. So the, again, I'm trying to, when I'm erasing this, I'm gonna talk to you guys about opportunity cost. The opportunity cost of something is how much it costs to give up something, okay? So here's how it works, okay? There's a country, okay, we'll call it country A, okay? Country A. Country A, okay? And they can produce two things, okay? They can produce computers. Okay, you guys all know computers, right? Hopefully you're using one to watch me right now, right? You can use computers or you can produce bread, okay? Loaves of bread. Okay, pretty, pretty simple, and, okay? So there's uh, about three co combinations that we can have, okay? There's points A, choice A, B, choice A, choice B, and choice C. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so in choice A, I'm gonna produce zero computers. Country A is gonna produce zero computers, but they're gonna produce 40 loaves of bread. Okay, guys, 40 loaves of bread. Now, country A can also produce choice B. In choice B, what they actually do is they actually produce two computers, okay? But because they produce two computers, they're actually only going to produce...